action. You are listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. My name is Dave Anthony. Good. Better. Each week, I read a story from American history to... Get there. Can we get a prompter in here? My friend. He's an idiot. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Hey, everybody. Ow, ow. That's how you do it, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this episode like we're a morning radio show. <laughs> yeah, you know which one I am. <laughs> ow, ow. We'll be down at the amphitheater this Friday night. Friday night, two for what hot dogs. It's amazing that after all these years, morning radio has not changed. Yeah, it's still Moon Cow yeah. and Moon, moon Cow. cow. Man yeah, cow. Moon, moon, no Moon Cow. <laughs> he's the night guy. Man Cow's the AM guy. Then they bring daytime, in Moon Cow. Yeah, he's a morning shift, but Moon Cow's the late night shift. Yeah, he gets the uh, you know late commute all the way through midnight. Yeah, he gets the. It's mainly for truckers. He's moon a Cow, trucker, Moon Cow, uh, and then Day Cow. Day Cow who handles the daytime shift. Uh huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good. It's a good. Uh, We're the cow radio, the only radio <laughs> full of cows. Everybody here who works here has technically a cow. We got night cow, midnight cow, <laughs> midnight cow, drive time cow, lunch cow. We got dinner cow tonight. Hope everyone's ready for some cow chow. Was drive time, dinner time, cow chow travel. <laughs> I'm just going to have you keep going until I put in the music. Uh, oh, no, that's a lot. I'm not sure. Brunch cow. That's right. Sundays, early, before lunch, after breakfast, we have brunch cow. Brunch cow. Holy shit. Uh, how's it oh. going? Now we got calf. <laughs> calf man. Calf man comes in from four to six. <laughs> Give me that baby talk. From keep a, going. Keep going. Not a fully formed cow, but a cow nonetheless. It is calf man. Jim? Ed? I'm the fucking hippo guy! Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like anarchy! On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> Come on, the place! Now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo! No sleep tell hippo! Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely done, my friend. No. <laughs> no. All right. All right, David. We're out of cow stuff. Um, uh, we have a few things to announce. Um, one of the things that we have uh, announced is that we will be doing a, a one-night-only live show that is timed perfectly for people in Australia and New Zealand. The show is November 18th at 6 p.m. Melbourne time. Uh, and the show will be available for 48 hours after. And if you're like, hey, I want to watch a show, well, then, you know, it's not just for people in Australia and New Zealand. Anybody can watch the show. We're doing it with Moment House, so you can go to momenthouse.com slash the dollop uh, and get tickets for that show. That's November 18th, 6 p.m., and it's 6 p.m. Melbourne time. So what time is it for people who would want to watch it live, Dave? It's like 11 for us, or is it even later? <sighs> It might be later. Yeah, so it's like, if you want to watch it live, it's going to be like midnight it's definitely or around there. one, something like yeah. that. So, you know, there's people who like doing that. Uh, I will be doing a lot of cocaine. <laughs> but that's usual. That's before every show. We also have other shows we're doing. Uh, in-person shows, we will be, uh, November 5th, we'll be at the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco. Saturday, November 6th, we'll be at the Crest Theater in Sacramento. That's this weekend, people. So let's dance. And then Friday, December 10th, we will be at uh, North Park Observatory in San Diego. Friday, December 10th. Uh, So go to dollopodcast.com for any information on that. And then I had my dates brought up, and it was ready to go. And it was right there, ready to go. And there they are. Awesome. Okay, we're back. Five, four. We still recording, Aaron? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I will be in Bozeman, Montana, Friday, November 12th, Saturday, November 13th. Uh, and then I will be, and that's uh, Last Best Comedy in Bozeman, Montana. Seattle, Washington, Friday, November 19th, uh, Saturday, November 20th. I'll be at Laughs Comedy Club. And then I will be Friday, November 26th. Through the 27th, I will be at the Denver Improv. That's in Denver. Appleton, Wisconsin, December 2nd through December 4th. Uh, that's at the Skyline Comedy Club. Chicago, Illinois, I'll be at the Den Theater. Sunday, December 5th from 7 to 9, Den Theater. And then Indianapolis, Friday, December 17th, 7 to 9 p.m. And then I'll be in Fort Wayne, December 18th at the Tiger Room. Somerville, Massachusetts, December 19th. The Crystal Ballroom. Go to GarethReynolds.com for all ticket information for 
that. And we should mention we have uh, one of my best friends, Luke Simmons, sitting in for this episode. Wait, what? Uh, oh, Hi. sorry. You should have known that. You were I talking about before. I didn't give permission. You actually suggested it. I did I not. Luke I, was said, in town I said and he can said, come as long as he's not on the Luke, show. a very talented writer, comedian in his this own right. This is Luke. Yeah, you've met him a bunch. Yeah, I did. He actually <laughs> sat on stage once for a show. I don't think that's uh, true. Dressed like Conor McGregor, and he didn't even have a microphone. We just had him sit in a chair. No, that was the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones guy. I thought that was just my seat. Yeah, no. Yeah, that he had was, a nice seat. That's all. No. Yeah. He had the probably the best yes, seat. That would be. Then. We should do that for one show. Yeah. Just put a chair on stage and, and have, have like the usher be like right here. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> right here. Right here. So just about ten feet away from where they'll it's be. It's a sitting. great view. It's kind of stressful because they notice you fidgeting. Don't go to the bathroom. It's weird for everyone. <laughs> Don't pull um, an apple out of your pocket. Should um. Uh oh. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Are you scared? Yes. Long time, first time. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. On Cal Radio! No. All the way dealing with Cal Pod. No. Warning drive time! <laughs> August 1st, 1886, year of our Lord, Jesus Cristo. Okay. Evelyn Walsh McLean was born in Leadville, Colorado. Great. That's where the lead is. Great. <laughs> Yes. You guys know that. Yeah. Now we've just moved it to Flint. Mm. So, her parent. That's not. You're right. It's wrong. It's cleaned up. It's right. Well, that's not true. But it's wrong to talk it's about. It's cleaned up. We're trying to ignore it. If we don't talk about it, it's fine. There's a guy outside Flint with a megaphone. who's like, we're trying to ignore it. Let it be. Her parents were Thomas Walsh and uh, Carrie Bell Reed. Uh, his mom was a school teacher. Dad was a carpenter. Uh, she had one younger brother, Vinson, V-I-N-S-O-N. Which we can't me. afford the tea. <laughs> we pulled our money together. We're a tea short of Vinson. Well, what are we going to do? He's Vinson. It would still be an E. He's Vinson. It was, isn't there a C in Vincent, too? Yeah. Sometimes v when they're I making the baby crib, they N just pick based on what numbers are, or letters are available. Sure. Them. Then they, yeah. it's like Scrabble. Yep. His son's name, Barry. Oh, God. With uh, one R and uh, a J that we cut off the bottom of, so it looks like an I. Fuck. I mean, his real name's Barge. It's what? the Dutch spelling. It's B-A-R-J, but we tried to make the J look like an I for Barry. What was your? What is the boy's name? I prefer Barge. I gotta be honest. Ah, too late. We already. I mean, you just tell people it's Barge. That's okay. fine. So we're done here. That'll be a thousand dollars. What? That's a thousand dollars. Why am I paying for that? Because we got you your goddamn crib here. In within the month. What? Within the month that you wanted it for. We got it here. I think I live in the worst country. Where's little Barge? <laughs> <laughs> little scamp. Well, his name's Barry, because you guys... Mm. Split the baby, call it Bergy. Oh. Bergy. Looking for that money still. Uh, so the family moved around. Okay. Uh, they're going from mining town to mining town, because Thomas is trying to strike a rich prospecting gold, right? right? In Leadsville. And he's a carpenter? All over, really. He should have gone he's to Goldsville. Or he's a carpenter who wants to start mining? Uh, well, he is mining, but he does he does carpentry, but then he mines. It's his uh, hustle, his side hustle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Honey, there's a place called Goldville over that mountain. Well, stay in Leadville and look for gold, baby. Leadville's it! Leadville's where it's going to be. Oh, look how rusty this is. Look, there's money town. <laughs> Keep your eyes focused on Leadsville. When Evelyn was 10, Thomas came into her room and said, quote, Daughter, I've struck it rich. Mm. He had. Oh. Uh, he had found a mine in Colorado that became one of the richest mines ever discovered. Wow, okay. So now they're loaded. And they move to Washington. Barry, your new crib's here. <laughs> Can I get it by a new name? Uh, well, listen, Marge. Also, I'm 14. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been a while. But Dad struck it rich. We can afford whatever name you want now, Marge. We're leaving Leadsville for Lodesville. <laughs> Right? So uh, the, w Washington, for some reason, is where all the rich people are moving at this point. And they're just sure. like, let's all move to Washington. Columnist uh, Sarah Booth Conroy, quote, it was a big thing then to come to Washington and become part of the national scene. And that's when all these big houses were built. It was considered the thing to do to come here to go to parties, maybe three parties in one night. Okay. Cool. So he, he plunks down a million dollars for a 60-bedroom house Jesus. on Massachusetts Ave. Now, back Holy then, that's just... Shit. That's like one of those $70 million houses now or whatever. Well, 60 bedrooms. Oh, you got to have a bedroom for every... <laughs> what? Shoe? <laughs> What's the... I mean, really, at what point Shirt? are you like... I don't know. Like, I don't have 60 friends. But you know what's great about uh, having 60 rooms is 
you can go to a different room and be like, God, this is cool. I've been here I've never a, been a here. year and a half. I've never been in this room. Now, do you live here? Yeah, I do, yes. Oh. I'm Rumpelstiltskin. Hello. Hello. Did you come with the house? No, I just have been living here for a few years. Okay. I had a horrible situation with an evil woman who took a baby from me. Okay. Well, there's a door uh, lock on the outside, so I'm going to lock you in. And okay. Just, I guess just let you die, and then I'll come back here. It'll be a new surprise in like six months. No, well, be good to feed me, but all all right, take I care. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. We don't have a kitchen. We only have 60 rooms, no kitchen. That's bad moves. Yeah, it was not smart. All right. No bathroom either. Uh, we got to have some bottoms? Nope. All right. So, uh, so yeah, a million dollars. So they, they ate off gold plates. Oh, good Lord. Because <laughs> they're He's just He's like assholes. Knows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, We've got so much. Who wants gold gravy? Have, let's be a crazy <laughs> stereotype. Eat your plates, everybody. Uh, so Evelyn grows up just accustomed to being rich. And one day she told her dad that walking to school was, quote, trying for my dignity. <laughs> so hard. Yeah. So hard. So he bought her a blue carriage and two matching horses with a coachman in silk uh, hat, hat and gloves. Good, good. So, And how old is she? Uh, she's like 10 around somewhere. Okay. Yeah. So she already felt that walking was undignified for her yes. at 10. She's or 12. Wrong. She 12. might be around 12. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, she's not wrong. No, yeah. she's not. It's terrible. She's right. Yeah. Uh, he encouraged her to just spend like crazy on clothes. So she's wearing the latest stuff from Paris. Sure. She changed her... Wardrobe and hairdo. Is it like a Brewster's Million situation? Does he have like a certain amount of time to spend this money? He's the richest guy in Washington, D.C. So he's just like, fuck it. I mean, whatever the mine, the gold mine he found was like fucking crazy. Okay. So, um, and how often did that? That was rare. I, yeah, that didn't happen. Okay. Mostly it was you getting killed by another guy over a hole in the ground. Better. Um, so my she, dick goes in that, Ted. <laughs> what? That's my dick hole. That's my mind. Uh, I've been fucking it. Well, I've been looking for gold. Oh, well, it's probably going to be hard to find. I've been really banging that hole. It's really big. Yep, yep. A I'm... man can walk in there. Well. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a prospect who's been watching, can I suggest a menage a trois? Where he fucks <laughs> it, you work it, and I watch. Because well, I got... like what I see. I mean, I'm, I'm I the don't... creep here, and I'm creeped out by this yeah, guy. Yeah, that guy's fucked up. Really weird. Not a bad idea. <laughs> I don't have I a don't problem hate the with pitch. it. It grows on you. I don't hate the pitch. All right. Well, I'm. I, do I do this with my clothes on them? Um, uh, uh, dealer's choice, but no. Okay, I'm taking <laughs> off the clothes and uh, I'm going to mine this mine. All right. Now chain him up. Let's take his money. <laughs> oh, no. You sit. God, I've been wanting to be chained up for years. So, okay. So... She would change her wardrobe and hairdo for each day of the week. Oh, my God. She drank cream de mint out of her dad's liquor cabinets. Oh she blew God. her allowance, allowance on ermine tails, which are like mink tails. Okay. And drove her governesses to quit. Oh, my Lord. In her carriage. In her carriage. <laughs> Out. Her parents sent her to Europe to study French and art, but she spent her time buying clothes and escaping chaperones to travel around she's Europe. She's just 12, 13 yeah, she's, she's she's like 14 probably at this point, okay. maybe 15. Okay, she's, right. Um, she once bribed her parents into buying her Mercedes by telling them she was in love with a very unpleasant Italian prince. <laughs> Who hasn't done that? Yeah, I did That's that. That's just the teen years. That's how I got my VW Jetta. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mother, I go, hey, well, I don't have to tell you, I'm in love with a prince in Italy, so I think probably going to go pretty good for us, unless, yeah. of course, I have something to get me around brown near. Jetta! <laughs> Would you trade Giuseppe for a Jetta? <laughs> I mean, he's everything, mother. I don't know. He's a spicy it meatball. Has a <laughs> uh, so when she came back from Europe, she had a crazy new hairdo. Uh, Conroy quote, quote, it was so complicated she couldn't wash her hair because nobody could put it back together. What? And her father hated it, and all the girls at school made fun of her, and the headmistress said, you just can't do that. Her father asked, "Well, what would it take you? What, what would it take How to make crazy you? How crazy can a hairstyle be? <laughs> what would it take to make you put your hair back like everybody else?" And Evelyn said, "Jewelry." 
No? Wow. So she's learning the game of leverage very oh, early yes. and well. Just fuck up your hair. But how does a hairstyle get so complicated that you can't wash it? I'm picturing flock of seagulls. Uh-huh. I'm picturing, like, multiple, like, braids going into a beehive. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is around that time, so right. she could have had birds in there or whatever. Like a yeah, working yeah, windmill on top. A windmill, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, it's just Some the fruits. Whole, just <laughs> the whole farm, really. Just a fully functioning <laughs> farm on her head. <laughs> Meh. Uh-oh. The gun are fighting. <laughs> so he bought a very expensive necklace to get rid of the hairdo. Now, she loved jewelry. If she didn't have jewelry on, she sent that. She said that meant she wasn't feeling well and the family should call a doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> god damn. What's wrong? You don't have any rings on. Uh, oh my god. How long has she been like this? God <laughs> damn it. A day, I guess. <laughs> she needs mouth to mouth. <laughs> What a terrible, terrible, just talking about raising a kid wrong. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I, I would imagine that even if you, yeah, like you want to spoil, I mean, I understand being like, yeah, I'm going to spoil my child, but it's like, I mean, you're making a real dick. But he, it's not, but like the people who just go out to strike it rich and do. Yeah. Like they, they don't, don't they, it's yeah. not like they built up something and slowly, they literally just right. walked and found a hole. I know, like, but I, I have money. I still would be like, you can have some of it, but I want to just be like, you need a carriage. I'm going to say, as somebody who's watched a lot of my super sweet 16 episodes, uh -huh. it usually turns out pretty well. That's true. <laughs> Everyone's I mean, happy. They, they are grounded apple. eventually. They do ground themselves eventually. <laughs> you need to find the limits. Yeah. Sure. You can know. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Evelyn quote, it's only when the thing I buy creates a show for those around me that I get all my money's worth. I cannot remember when I did not hunger for thrills. That is key to all my recklessness. I hate boredom most. I, that's amazing too. To, like, that's not, that, that is one of the things that happens when you're rich is yes. that you talk about regular person problems and pretend that solving them in your life is unique to you, mm -hmm. you know, where you're just like, personally, I just don't like to get depressed. So I have all this like, yeah, no, we all don't like to get depressed. We all just don't afford helicopters. Like, so I think the helicopter, I've just got to feel like, I personally hate it when I'm down. Like I cannot handle sadness, you know, I'm like, yep, yeah, we all, we all feel that way. Yeah, and they also, they can't, they they get no feeling from normal things. Right, right. And so yeah. they have to do, I mean, that's why well, the Epstein thing happened, because they just, they can't, like, after a while, normal sex. Is I, like, I, well, I, I bought everything. Sorry, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly we want to cover our bases. My bad. Allegedly, Sorry, Aaron, I know Lord. that upsets you. We don't want to besmirch the good name of Jeffrey Epstein on our show. <laughs> so... Uh, authors Dan and Leslie Landrigan said Evelyn was, quote, feisty, reckless, kind-hearted, impetuous, a gambler, and a show-off. Did, like, kind-hearted accidentally get put in there? No, it feels a little she was, like, she did have a side of her that was nice. Right. When they hunted the poor from helicopters, it was with <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> She'd pet them, tag them, and release them. <laughs> Thank you. He's one of mine. Yeah. <laughs> get in my hairdo. Uh, so her brother Vincent was the same. In 1905, he crashed his Mercedes with Evelyn in the car, and he died, and she was seriously injured. The doctors ended up giving her morphine during... Get jewelry! Get jewelry in an <laughs> IV bag! Now! Hurry! Move! Move! They ended up giving her morphine during her recovery, uh -oh. and she became addicted. Oh, dear. But they did wean her off. Okay. Um, they took it away. She got clean. Now, as far as men, Evelyn had a guy that be, he'd been pursuing her for years. Ned McLean. They met in a dance class when she was 11 and he was eight. Okay, sure. And he was instantly in love. Interesting. So he's one of those kids. Creepy. Yeah. Yeah. A little too much. Yeah. Where's the suit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when he became a young man, he started proposing <laughs> at least a dozen times. They were engaged at least six times. Wow. On and off. You know, Shh. she would break it off because he's a huge drunk. Okay, and Ned. I'm still picturing like eight and nine year olds. So no, they're at some point he's now. getting older. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right. Evelyn, you're 14. I'm 11. It's time we settle down. <laughs> I want to quit drinking, baby. I'm almost 10. It doesn't even <laughs> suit me anymore. Uh, Ned would drink so much that sometimes he made a sling out of a handkerchief to keep his hand steady for his glass. Oh my <laughs> god! At 21. When what year were tables invented? He's. <laughs> Feels like table does the <laughs> job of the There's split. There's nowhere to put this thing. Because you're surrounded by tables, Ned. Just look left or right. There's you... a bar. You're at a bar. <laughs> uh, Get me my coaster sling. <laughs> Ned, Ned. I'll need another sling for my cocktail peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got eight slings. Ned was... Um, 
And that was good looking. He was shy. Uh, his grandfather became rich as a boiler maker and steamboat builder. Okay. And then uh, Ned's father, uh, with another rich guy, kind of sucked Cincinnati dry through kickbacks and shakes down and corruptions. Like they, he just they just took over the town and then, okay, great. They like just... what happened? Like what's happening with America? Right, right. But, but that city, yeah. I like that we've built into a bigger version. <laughs> yes. And then when the city was in such bad shape that riots broke out, he left for D.C. He's I don't like, like this town. These people are real <laughs> jerk offs about money, to be honest. Uh, there he amassed a larger fortune going into utilities and banking. He founded D.C.'s trolley system. He owned the Cincinnati Enquirer and the Washington Post, part of the Jeez. Cincinnati Red Stocking. So he's everything. fucking And uh, this is Ned's father. Ned's father. So these two. The two richest people. In, exactly. They so are. they are just rich yes. as shit and they have a connection, which yes. is that we don't like to be touched by pores. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Ned's mother was the daughter of Edward F. Uh, Beale, a very famous guy, a military hero, explorer, a diplomat, friend of Ulysses Grant. So they're, it's just right, all right, there. Right. And that pedigree was something Evelyn liked, right? Military right. heroes. You sure. Know. Yeah. So Ned also obviously raised a spoiled rich kid, which is probably why he and Evelyn got along so well. Right. Um, they were children of DC's two richest families, high society kids, and inseparable. It's, it's funny if, like, if you're his dad to like find out that your son is double slinging it at bars, he's getting so hammered. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really tried to raise him properly. Where is he doing? He has slings for his drunk hands. He's an inventor. <laughs> yeah, we call him Puppet Man. Uh, Ned's uh, Ned, he apprenticed as a cub reporter at the Post. As a cub reporter? Like, so, like a brand new reporter. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, obviously. When they're hustling, you know, they're like hustling right. to get stories. Okay. He would drive to assignments in his huge, expensive Packard Roadster, which like the weekly salary, uh, the weekly upkeep was like more than a reporter's I've yearly seen this, salary. I've seen this on set before a little bit where it'll be like someone has like a, you know, father or something in the, so there's yeah. a very successful person's child is like a PA, you know, yeah. like this, I mean, yeah. this person. They came in their beam. It's just it's nicer to everything than me, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I, I got most of your coffees, but I spilled yours in my Lambo. <laughs> so we could just get some money for that. Yeah. So uh, he, uh, he was big in the DC nightlife, obviously, he's a boozer. Sure. Uh, he's a dashing bachelor at the time. Okay, he's a know. dashler. Evelyn finally agreed to marry Ned when wow. he promised he would quit drinking. Uh huh. That's fine. And this always works. It does, it's never not. What is the way to do it? That's the number one way to get Absolutely. sober. Absolutely. Yeah. It's I like noticed, a crash diet, but we, for love. We yeah. haven't discussed any timeline, so that's a good move. Yeah, right. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. right. Yes, I'll get sober for a day. At a, at a point in the future. <laughs> Uh, she wants a big society wedding. Ned's mom wants. Ned to wants it. to wait a few months and I mean, years. <laughs> mom, his mom wants to have it in in Bar Harbor up in Maine, but Ned talks Evelyn into eloping. Okay, wow. And they they go to Colorado and they get married on July twenty second, nineteen oh eight. She's twenty two. He's nineteen. Okay. Society pages gushed over the new couple and their. I just lifestyle. Can't, I, it's amazing to me how it. <laughs> How we still do this, how we still like mm -hmm. elevate. Never changed. You know, and and celebrate yeah. the level of affluence that these people have. Yeah. Like, oh, imagine, ah, they're getting together. <laughs> Just like, what the fuck? We should be like, you know, like we should have pitchforks most of our days. Yes. To prod them closer to each other. Yeah, right. To push them closer. Right. Get them in a pen so they mate. <laughs> they get two. together and mate. It's just, yes. Yeah, it's just like snow panthers. There you go. There you go. He's in her. He's in her, everybody. These Shh. are the only two surviving Shh. rich in Leadsville. <laughs> it's our last two Kardashians. We're trying to get them to mate. So they get married, and then their dads give Fine. them give okay. them each a hundred thousand dollars okay so two hundred thousand okay. dollars to use on a three-month european and middle eastern honeymoon oh my god that's 6.5 million today. oh so my they god they got s the equivalent this of 6.5 million, million to take a three-month vacation six million dollar trip can you imagine yeah. trying to spend six million no. dollars in that amount of no. time i'd be i would be very hard <laughs> Yes. I guess, can we just buy the boat and then we'll give it back later? We really are, we have too much. Just crash the boat into the shore and yeah. we'll just walk off. Yeah. yeah. We'll build a new one. All right boats you crash and we step off Every right Every day when it's you buy a new boat. Yes. Every day you're like, all right, we'll take this boat. 
So they went in in a Packers. Can I shoot you and kill you <laughs> for this much money? Okay. <laughs> oh, great. Take it. They had uh, a Mercedes and uh, they had a camel caravan for part of it. Evelyn, quote, one day in Leipzig, we lost patience with the fact that we only had one Mercedes and went overnight to Paris and bought an extra one. We just didn't have enough Mercedes. You understand? How are you going to get by with one Mercedes? We look ridiculous. How can we drive over all the poor people? Uh, and we damaged it very badly when we hit the camel. <laughs> <laughs> but still, they managed to blow through all the money. Wow. And when they... Arrived in Paris at the end of the trip. No. They didn't have enough money what? to pay the hotel bill. What? Evelyn quote, So I cabled my father, and he sent me fresh credit and his love. Then I went to Cartier's. Uh, that is the way I always get in trouble when I have some money in my hands. They were lovely, and of course, they knew me and dad. And, um, and um, I bought diamonds. Um, and um, blah, 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 blah. It's like an Instagram story. She bought the Star of East Diamond, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Uh huh. Sure. And then Dad, she we're broke again. <laughs> and Dad, will you cable more money? <laughs> I want to buy the West Star. <laughs> Bad news: the credit is stale. I'll need some fresh, please. Love you. <laughs> she smuggled the diamond through customs to avoid paying taxes. Wow! I, I love that everyone hates taxes. <laughs> I just. And they just got the rich. rich How are the rich allowed to hate? It's they like, just are. It's, what our, it's our country set up. We, they don't have to pay taxes. That's the whole thing of it. It's amazing. And then we pay taxes, and then they get tax yes, cuts. It's essentially taxes. stealing our money. Yes. Yes, yes it, is, it is stealing our money. Yes. Uh, the diamond is so large that guests at her house called it the carafe stopper. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that all, it just also shows you how it's like. <laughs> You'll stop using your carafe. <laughs> it's that remarkable. <laughs> oh. I think it just fills up the top uh, of the neck of the bottle. Yeah. It's like I'm yes. imagining that baseball diamond from the Muppet yeah. movie. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, that's. I think that's what we're all thinking about. Yeah, we're it? all <laughs> thinking of the diamond from the Muppet movie, no doubt. <laughs> that one. Now, Ned was made the Washington Post business manager, even though he's pretty clueless. Right. And who better to have, like, tell you how to succeed in business than a guy who's been given everything? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Here's what I did. I took a ton of my dad's money and just played around with it. <laughs> Do that. Okay. <laughs> Look at it. We're fucked. Um, yeah, that's uh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Here's how to take a $6 million jaunt. <laughs> <laughs> the mistake a lot of people make is paying taxes on the $120,000 diamond you have when you could just shove it inside the dead camel you hit with the third Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> so his father gave him $1,000 a month allowance, 30000 a day, right? So that's a lot of fucking money. Yes, and also at some point, a no more allowance, I would say. But he always ran out. Daddy, I need more pocket money. <laughs> he always ran out so that he would go to Evelyn's dad and borrow money. Can I have a pocket money from you? Yes, he'd get like seven, ten k from him. I would hate to do stuff for it. May I have more to use for things I love? Why don't more people do this? I just wrote a column about it in the paper, and everyone was very upset. Ask Dad. When you need money, ask Papa. <laughs> in December 1909, uh, the McLeans had a son, and they named him Vincent. Okay. Same fucking spelling, which sure. is not how you spell Annoying. it. They could afford the T. It's now. not even a name. I yeah. can't. No, it's not. He was dubbed by the press and everybody else, quote, the $100 million baby due to his future financial prospects. <sighs> what a, a horrible life for a baby. Uh, and he had a reserve price that you could purchase him for a hundred million. That's right. Yeah, you could, you yeah, 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 if you have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this freaked out the McLeans, who were worried about kidnapping. Right. Because kidnapping was a thing at yeah, this time. Yeah. No. I mean, that's what the papers are doing. They're like the most kidnappable baby, <laughs> right here. Here's a picture of him, and this is his home address. Boy, anyone should take this thing. They'll make a killing. So he was pampered. He was very guarded. He had nur nurses. He had servants. He would get tutors. He had guards. He slept in a golden crib, which was a gift from King Le Leopold of Belgium, who he might just, be the worst human being ever, ever, ever good guy. lived. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, you can't... Uh, this child will be an asshole. I mean, yeah, you, are, oh. you are, without a doubt, 
Yeah, he could, has no chance. That's I, what rich I, people I, should do, is they should have a poor part of the house where you feel poor, and that's where you should raise your children. And at, like, 17, be like, hey, it's not bad, see? And like, <laughs> and like, oh, it was so hard. It's like, now you have character. <laughs> now you can have some money. Or counterpoint, put him in a gold crib from Leopold and hang a mobile that's all severed hands and feet from <laughs> that's good too. the diamond mines that he ran to pay for the gold. Oh, that's wow. good too. Yeah. He's fucked up. <laughs> Don't blame me. I was raised in the rich part of the house. <laughs> oh, that's problematic. Yeah, that that's poor fair. Room. All right. Now it makes sense. So uh, they moved into Friendship, which is an enormous we mansion. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Uh, built... Built for Ned's father and became known for constantly throwing lavish parties. Okay, so French, they had a lot of Come to friendship. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Yeah. The Boston Globe, quote, there, oh, there one saw senators, judges, diplomats, cabinet members, generals, and admirals, famous personalities of every kind. So okay. they're the fucking place. It's right. the party. They're always throwing parties. So what, 1%. Else, what else are they going to do? Right. There's no, that's true. Else. That's true. When I've watched the Real Housewives show before, you know, been in relationships mm -hmm. watching the show. Sure, and sure, sure, maybe sure. a little bit yeah, on not my you own, on but own. never on yeah, my own, no. but maybe a little bit on my yeah, own. And sure. maybe it's maybe Once it's maybe, maybe, maybe I'm the one pushing to watch it when I'm in the relationship. Follow all the spinoffs. Maybe yeah, the yeah, whole sure. yeah. The prop. What I'm trying to uh, the point Georgia I'm trying to make is a the New point York I'm City. trying to make is yep, Orange County. The point I'm trying to make uh -huh. is is that if you watch any of these, and I don't really know what they are, but let's say you're watching Salt Lake City or you're watching sure. The Real Housewives of Miami sure. or even the classic Beverly Hills or even Orange uh -huh. County. I mean, yeah. there's a lot to choose from. Not New York, okay? Right. Right, honestly. That Bethany, one's... enough. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but when you're watching these shows, which again, I uh, uh, you detest. Don't. Yeah. Um, it's just the worst of everything. Sure. All they do is have parties. Every episode is about someone throwing a party and the drama, and they feel real world stress over the yeah. party. They just well, they're unable intense. to have real problems. What's going on with the ice sculpture? Well, yeah, it's that sort of shit yeah. where they're just like, I can't believe she wore clogs. And you're just like, That's <laughs> like they treat the littlest thing at a party like a dire thing, but it's all they can do is just take really extravagant, expensive trips and just have these fucking parties and stuff like that. And that is basically all you do. Yeah. Again, allegedly. I've not seen these programs, but um, the Google search tells you that. Sure. And now I see you're wearing clogs. Was this how you fell out? I just hate them? Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's so special. At one New Year's Eve party, 40 cases of champagne were drunk before dinner. Uh-huh. They had 2,000 socialites at another party. After seeing their ballroom, because they had a ballroom in the mansion, uh -huh. Idaho Senator William Barra said, quote, this is what brings on revolutions. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> this is what they guillotine folks for. Oh, stop. No, really. Your head should be on a pike. Oh, that's so... You are charming. <laughs> Evelyn's father also bought them... A big single style house named Briarcliff. It had originally been built for Montgomery Sears. Now wow. they considered it tearing it down and building something new, but instead uh, decided to put in a bowling alley, a ballroom, a nursery suite, and a wing for Evelyn's mother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> a wing. Well, it's hard to know if you should tear it down or put in a bowling alley. Yeah, no, I know. We've all faced that quandary. Yeah. yeah. I only recently realized that everyone has to name boats, and now I'm getting that yeah. there's a level yeah. of house which also gets a good friendship. Christian name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Rich Cliff people and name friendship. their houses. Yeah. Friendship. Uh, my house is named the asshole. Uh, the dirty asshole. Thomas. Thomas. Welcome to my home, the revolutionary balls. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. These guys are naming... Welcome to Castle de Anus. <laughs> I don't want, I'm not uh -huh. coming to your party. Well, Kai, let me show you the back door. That's what I want you to walk through. I don't it's got like curtains. this. It's tight Stop ones. It. No. Come on. So Briarcliff was burgled at one point, and the cops thought it might have been a plot to kidnap baby Vincent. Okay. Obviously, this is their greatest fear. For sure. Yeah. Maybe live in a smaller place. And he's already constantly being watched by armed guards. What a nice life. <laughs> What a nice life to be in your gold crib surrounded by gunned men. That's right. When Evelyn and Ned thought Vincent was lonely, they rented a child from some parents to be his you, friend. You there! You! 
Stupid people. I'm sorry. Poor face. Uh, you there. Fine, you. Give us your child. We'd like to rent it to play with our son. No. Let your our, child go, please. He's our boy. We can't. And he will be best friends with the best child on earth. No. He'll be fine. We'll give you a safety deposit in case we don't bring him back. Yes. <laughs> There's a chance we keep him. How much would that cost? The ink He's wet my suit. son. How much would it cost for you to be done with him forever? I can't put it. Our intentions are to bring him back. We're just asking if we forget Never. or think he's firewood or something. What's what? the price? What is? Uh, do you speak English? No, uh, yes. no I do. Yes, do you? Five How million much? fucking dollars. Five million? Yes. Great. No problem. There you are. People are fucking insane. What's this child's name? I don't know. He's not mine. We're gonna call him <laughs> Ace, and we don't even care who you are. Come on, Ace. Okay, so, God, rich people are out of their fucking minds. I mean, I'm also trying to picture like, how do you like? You know, you take, like, a regular kid to, like, a gold-cribbed house. It's not like a regular kid's going to be like, cool. Or just it, whichever parent gets the offer first, breaking it to the other. Honey, okay, I'm going to, it's going to yeah. sound crazy at first. What? But. Where's the child? Well, Where's that's Harry? the thing. What would you say our child is worth? If I, you had to ball our kid. Everything. Absolutely everything. Every I've got, me everything. I've got most of that. <laughs> I'm not even sure what's happening. I got almost everything for him. You know what I mean? It's a good deal. The yeah. longer you sit with Plus, it, the we get his clothes deal. still. They yep. weren't dicks about no, it. Yeah. They, they didn't like them. So, in 1910, they're in Paris. Sure, obviously. And jeweler Pierre Cartier, Cartier, I Cartier, yeah. Cartier, came to their hotel room to show them the Hope Diamond. Uh, excuse me. I have something I think you might want to see. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Mm -hmm. I love you, too. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, that's enough. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm wet. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Okay. I want to show you something, huh? Oh, you didn't tell me what company. Hello. Oh, oh that's my boss. In your ear. <laughs> okay, so. Mm. Got good news for you too, huh? Okay. Uh, uh, look, you didn't tell me you bought a kitten, huh? <laughs> Hello, no, no, no. Where's a cat penis? Huh? <laughs> just want to touch it quickly, huh? That's just a pillow. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I don't really know what uh, cats are. So, the diamond. You want to see it? Mm -hmm. Let me pull it out of this box. <laughs> no, why are you doing that? I oh, love you so much. I fuck you in the car later, right here. The French scare me. It's a Cartier. Oh, no, I see. Yes. Yeah, nice. Uh, some blood's on that from my teeth, but other than that, <laughs> this diamond is ready to roll. <laughs> so the Hope Diamond is the most amazing gem in the world. Uh -huh. It's 47 carats, wow. it's blue, and it's cursed. Okay, what? <laughs> this is a Tales from the Crypt? Yeah. So it is the largest diamond in the world. You can see it's blue, it's just one of a kind. And it comes as a curse. <laughs> <laughs> At no extra charge. Uh, yes. uh, so Cartier explains how the curse had affected previous owners. See now, that? Uh, <laughs> the truth here is a little, mm, but sure. this is what this is what is believed. A gem merchant named uh, Tavernet stole it from the a statue of the Hindu goddess Sita. At uh -huh. 80, he was torn apart and eaten by wild dogs. Wow. <laughs> How long did he have between stealing and being I don't know. I mean, it seems like a ribs. while. Yeah. I don't think an 80 year old man steals it, but <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Waited a long time. He was like, I'll tell you what, I don't think that there is such thing as a curse after all. Oh no, seven dogs. <laughs> hey, hey they, oh, oh, they eat me. Oh. When Princess de Lamballe had it, she was beaten to death by a French mob. <laughs> Marie Antoinette owned it, and we know what happened there. Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> Sultan Abdul Hamid bought it and then lost his throne, and his concubine who wore it died young. So everybody who has it is dying. And, yeah. If someone came to my room and told me all this, I'd be like, I don't want this here. Oh, I wouldn't. I'd be like, look how pretty it is. I would be like, sorry. <laughs> Worth it. No. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, if I had it, every time I saw dogs, I'd be like, run, run, run dogs. <laughs> Evelyn wasn't into it, but not because of the curse or the insane price. She didn't like the setting. Right. <laughs> sure. Interesting. Let's let the rental child hold it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Where are my mom and dad? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Hey, you're going to hold this pretty blue I thing had friends. for us. Can yeah. we have it set in his skull? Like um, right at the top of his forehead? Oh, like a third eye. It'll be yes. lovely. Who are we talking about? You. You. Oh. Yeah, we're going to put a diamond in your head, okay. and it'll be there forever. I don't... And you'll follow me around. Oh. Yeah. Well, I own you... you. Yeah, no, I remember. You told me. All right. So, not much of a lie for... All right. That's a good one. Yeah. Sorry, Vincent. Your friend is getting reused as a diamond setting. Kill him. <laughs> Kill him in front of me. I want a new boy. So, a few months later, Cartier came to D.C. and he reset the diamond. It's still cursed. And he let Evelyn keep it for a weekend. Okay, wow. Just like a, you know, yeah. Sure. She put it on her dresser, quote, for hours that jewel... That was a guy who worked for her, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, I would love to put uh, some clothes on you, but uh -huh. uh, all right, just put it there on my... Go. There you yes. go. Thank you. It might roll off if I move. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Just stay right there. Right. If it rolls off, you die. Oh, interesting. Yes. <laughs> Great work. Uh, quote, for hours that jewel stared at me. At some point during the night, I began to want the thing. So Ned agrees to buy the Hope Problem. Diamond. They have problems. <laughs> yes. He agrees to buy the Hope Diamond for 154000 Wow. Evelyn didn't think the Hope Diamond would bring her bad luck, although she was a little bit concerned, but she didn't believe in it. Okay. But she's like, meh. Right. So they included a buyback option. If they thought the diamond was bringing them misery, then they could return it. That's what works. Like, yeah. we're done. Can I get like a, a curse a curse buyback yeah. clause? Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> How much to re -cur reverse curse? <laughs> What's that fee? Uh, so there's just a small restocking fee of 10000 but Great. you get all your money back. Great. I just want to get rid of the curse. Yeah, it might not be gone. Right. We don't know if you Maybe give it up. It. Uh, if, uh, if you give it up, the curse might still be there. Um, I don't. Do you have dogs? Uh, no, by design. They, a lot of them follow me, though. Mm -hmm. And there's mobs walking around from time yeah, to time. Yeah, yeah. So you're probably going to die. Mm -hmm. But let's do this. Great. I'm not even sure we landed on I don't either. doing it. I so just yeah. know you're probably dead. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Good talk, though. Yeah, good, I guess, on your end. I'm still a little, like, closure's not there for yeah. me. I'm uh, looking for... But, oh, um, how about oh this? God. Can I can I broker Go something ahead. here? Yeah. Sure. We'll throw in a pack of dogs. Uh, pack no, of I dogs. See, there's a bunch of dogs outside. Oh my God! Actually. We have a we have a whole pack of dogs. Oh Rottweilers. God. Oh God! Haven't no. eaten in a week. Oh no! That's, yeah, it's gonna be fine. Feels more by design than curse. I'm gonna paint you to look like a ham. I don't think that's fair. It's what it is. Get the ham paint. <laughs> So, uh, right, so they can return whatever they want. Evelyn didn't believe in the curse, but she's cautious, like I said. Quote, I must confess, I know better, and yet, knowing better, I believe. By that I mean, I never let my friends or child touch it. <laughs> that feels like what a rich person would do anyway. That feels like a good scapegoat to get people to not get their fingerprints all over it. Right? Yeah. It's such a weird... Yeah, because it's not the rich person move to be like, if anyone's cursed, it's me. Right. Like that's just like what a selfish right. person. I bet you there's no curse. She made this all up just so people wouldn't get their fingerprints. No, 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 oh no, no Julie, no, yeah. don't touch it. <laughs> Why? It's, it's cursed. Oh, it is? <laughs> oh. It's bullshit. Yeah. The, and the curse is already making you look very bloated when you tried to put it on. So it's just oh, it's not worth it's you swollen. wearing. Yeah. Oh, do you feel swollen? swollen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I should run. You should do a lot. <laughs> I'm running away. Yes. Uh, so uh, her mother, so she calls her mother-in-law to tell her she bought it. And when Evelyn tells her she's purchased the Hope Diamond, there's a friend there also who's listening. And she almost faints and yells out, it is a cursed stone. I don't believe in that. And I'm not going to let my friends touch it. So shut up. <laughs> they try to talk Evelyn out of it. Doesn't work. She's bought it. She's in. Yeah. Soon after Ned's mother came down with a terrible cold. Okay. Ned flies her doctor back from North Carolina who's on vacation. Doesn't, she dies. Wow. And then the friend dies right after her. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Were they sneaking little? Well, they got a little loops. yappy. Like, don't buy yeah, the diamond. And the they, diamond's like, fuck you. Yeah, okay. Shut your goddamn mouth. Yeah. I like that the diamond, like, corners people when she's not around. <laughs> I understand you've been talking a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm the Hope Diamond. Say it to my goddamn shiny face. I just said you were a little cursed. Oh, really? Yes. Because now you're about to die. <laughs> Call in the dogs! Your oh, we only got camels? Bring in the camels! Eat this lady alive! Your Aunt Beth was curbed and eaten by camels. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesus Christ. Yeah. What a terrible. Curbed? Yeah, curb stopped. And then the camels came over and ate? Yeah, once she was put out, yeah. I tell you, I really thought they were vegetarians. Camels? Yeah. Oh, no, they store a lot of meat in those humps. Okay. Yeah, those humps are mainly bacon. And they eat people. They love people. That's I had the thing no people. Camel thing you got to know about camels. They're very good in deserts. Uh -huh. They hydrate a lot before any journey. They uh -huh. love to spit and they will eat a human like it's a lasagna. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's I guess dark. I just never I never have seen that. Um, the humps are basic they are basically I've, I saw a whole Attenborough thing on camels and I never saw the David the, Attenborough is a camel in a man suit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. Yeah. Now that makes sense. You read Breitbart? I am Breitbart. Yeah. <laughs> Weird answer. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so right. She she dies, and her friend dies, and uh, the diamond is kept in the mansion during the day, and then taken to a safe deposit box box at the company building at night. It just seems so dumb. Yeah. Ned bought a special car just to drive the diamond back and forth, and it had armed guards I'm in it. I'm having trouble relating to these people. What? It's so fucking crazy that this is a thing you want. You it have just... a diamond car. Yeah. <laughs> a car for a diamond. You shouldn't be here. Part of me feels like maybe it's just the genius way to distract from the $100 million baby. Yeah. So like, which be. one do you go for? The maybe. rich baby or yeah. the diamond car? Right. Well, you can't go for both. <laughs> or the baby's in the diamond car. <laughs> it's just diamond code name. But yeah, I, I mean, it just at some point, it's like, I don't, it's cursed. It's extremely expensive, and it has to have its own car to go away yeah. every night. It's, it's like you kind of own it, but it's also <laughs> kind of like weird. It's really weird. Yeah. Uh, so after her mother-in-law's death, Evelyn had the Hope Diamond blessed in a church. That'll do it. I'll take care of it. Yeah. As the minister did it, lightning hit a tree across the street, and the tree hey, fell down. Get the fuck out, actually. Now that I think about it. Actually, you guys get the fuck out right now. Do you understand me? Leave the church now. If anyone should object to the blessing of this diamond, speak. Oh, God. Okay, that's Alrighty. the big guy. You know, oh, that was actually Christ. Jesus walked off the crucifix. <laughs> uh, publicly, the host, the Hope Diamond, increases their fame. And in turn, that increased their concern someone would kidnap Vincent. Wait, what do they do? Can you just go somewhere? Go away. You can afford to. Uh, guess what, guys? We put the cursed diamond on our $100 million baby, so you don't want to take him. You'd get yeah, cursed. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the yes, world's most expensive jam on him. Yes. Uh, he watched. Uh, he, he, Vincent's watched 24-7 by nurses and bodyguards. There's just always people around. Evelyn's father died, and she's grief-stricken. And she turned to her old friend, Morphine. Wow. Okay. And once again, she's addicted. And she's also drinking a lot. Okay. And Ned's like, I, can Ned's I are, Ned's still? also always plowed. Oh, he is. I wasn't He's sure. Never he... stopped. Oh, I'm okay. still, I still plan to eventually get sober, as promised. Once we're <laughs> at married. At a future date. Once yeah. we get married. We are married, and someday we will also be married and sober, as yeah, advertised. Uh, yeah. As I said. We've been married for a decade. Yeah, but it's coming. The whole sober thing. Yeah, but we were, you're supposed to be sober. I uh, am going to be. That's the cool thing. Like something we can look forward to in our older age. Yes. We'll, we'll be dead because of the hope diamond. That might be when I sober up, when I die. I, I, we, we don't know. I, like I said, I'll dr stop drinking when I die, baby. <laughs> It's not the best time to quit when your dad has just been torn apart by dogs, which, again, I'm sorry about. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, so she's drinking, he's drinking. She is so fucked up that she's she's not recognizing her own guests at party parties. Wow. And so to deal with this, Ned has a sanitarium built on the top floor of Friendship where she could recover. How about name tags? No, just build... <laughs> How about some name tags? Just build a sanitarium on top of the house. I mean... What else would you do? You know what? My wife is sick. Why don't I build a hospital in the house? I mean, you have too much money. Oh, wait. We'll she's not sick. A, she's drunk. We'll just build a sanitarium. Doctor, how bad is it? Well, she didn't recognize almost half of the 2,000 guests. Uh, well, we're just going to lock the door and keep you up here at night. <laughs> She, so she's in the house, so she ends up just meandering around the mansion, and she thinks that lizard monsters are crawling all over. Oh, they're back! <laughs> so she's just junked up, drunked up, junked and drunked, she's thinking lizards are going to kill her. 
So, but eventually they. Good thing they got this diamond. Yes. Eventually they. She gets better. It was served in a monkey paw. <laughs> I don't know how much better she gets. Like no one really, I could find no one went into it, but it's a pretty she low becomes bar. More functional again. <laughs> I think she's still drinking. Drinking. Yeah. I, I don't know if she's doing morphine, but she could have been. Sure. Like I, she's doing less. But she's, she's still... just not seeing lizard monsters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we just want to get you a place where you're not seeing lizard I'm monsters. Try, the only thing I'm trying to quit is seeing lizards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we can just move those out. Those were there to guard the baby and the jewel. Oh, yes. Lizard's out. Hello. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Oh, I'm sorry. The lizard monsters were real. Yes, we, I hired them. It's so great and such yeah, an thank honor. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. It's sad that it has to end this way, but um, if you ever have any... Sure. Other needs. Yeah. We'd love to be a part. All of us would just really form a bit of our own family and here. I, and I'd like to personally apologize for eating your dad. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. I'm you're just lizard monsters. A couple of missteps. <laughs> I mean, we knew going we in. We messed up a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, I mean, yes. you're lizard monsters. We no. knew going in. Can we so... just eat you before we go? Then? No. Okay. I'm all actually... right. All right. What? Do you have anything lined up? What's your next? Uh... Next thing? We're, well, we're not sure exactly, but uh-huh. we're. I mean, we're gonna go try and live with some families in Dubuque. Okay. Yeah, That's they're nice. trying to freak a daughter out because she's engaged to an Italian man. Okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. Well, have just, fun with yeah. that. Yeah, it's good. You yeah. know, but it's been a fun project. Yeah, project. I mean, yeah, good time. Really nice having you around. Anywho, I'm sober, so. Mm. Sex. Yeah. Well, yeah. for you, I mean. Just has such connections to this plot. We did. Yeah. We did. A little hug goodbye? Uh, how about if I just rub your belly? Oh, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so uh, Ned's father, John R., came down with jaundice and incurable hiccups. Jaundice. <laughs> um, okay. And um, sorry, the last part again. <laughs> incurable hiccups? It's a nightmare. <laughs> I'm sorry, these are chronic hiccups. I would 100% <laughs> believe it was diamond related if someone I knew came down with it. Like, I would also, the doctor, I'd be like, what are you saying? He has forever hiccups. <laughs> Medically <laughs> speaking, your father will never stop hiccuping. They're fatal. They are <laughs> fatal hiccups. We think he has about 19,000 hiccups left before he passes. Oh my God. Son. I just got. I can't. Word from the doctor. Uh huh. <gasps> Turns it <gasps> boo. No, sorry, didn't. didn't, didn't, didn't. I thought that would do it. Yeah. God damn it! Have you, have you tried holding your breath? And yeah, no, that's literally. If anyone says that again, I'm gonna like lose my mind. I feel like I can have a regular life. No, you can't. I don't want Please. you near me. Love me. Jesus Christ, the curse is real. Love your dad. You are a fucking nightmare. Love your father. Come here. I love you, son. There's something I have to tell you. God damn it. When you were a little boy, I hired an actor to play me because I was on the road. Where are the dogs? Please, please, please. Son, let's get close. I have to tell you something. Oh, there's a dog. <laughs> it's a real dog. It's he can be out. <laughs> If you say the hook diamond too many times, oh my God, in a row of dog shows. Perfect up. timing, buddy. Well done. Well done. <laughs> oh, that was great. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So he becomes paranoid. The dad. The dad also becomes on top of hiccups and uh, jaundice. So he's a yellow hiccuping so paranoid like, yeah, guy. Yeah, he's just a yellow hiccupman. And he barricades himself inside of his mansion because <laughs> he thinks Ned is trying to poison him. <laughs> <laughs> and if Ned goes over there, he threatens to shoot him. Okay. So Ned hires the Pinkertons. Oh my God! To help get him safely into the mansion, where he patches things up with his dad. Wow! So he has a Pinkerton like entourage. Who hasn't done that? Well, you're not getting along with him your... to go see his hiccuping yellow dad <laughs> that's barricaded himself in a room. That's right. <laughs> Tale is all this time. I mean, the Pinkertons opened that door. They were like, he was fucking serious? I thought he was being like hyperbolic. This is fucking crazy, but this guy's actually yellow. And Hello. Hidden. I'm quite yellow now. Hey. It's gotten worse. Love my boy. Uh, so he dies on June 9th, 1960. He's going to hiccup for about another two years post-death. <laughs> um, the will. 
does not leave the post in the Inquirer to Ned. Instead, it's placed in a trust. Oh, interesting. So he did not trust Ned. Well, his estate could not be split up until 20 years after the death of his grandchildren. Uh Wow, okay. He clearly thought Ned was unfit to run the right, businesses, yeah. which is news to Ned because he had always told Ned for years. He would say to Ned, "I'm holding the post just for you." Wow! Like, and then he the will comes. He's like, "Ah, oh, I didn't fucking you were shit." Dear Ned, a lot of lies were told to you. <laughs> so Ned's very upset. Sure. He's only going to get an allowance. Aww. So they sue, just like regular times. Yeah, they sue, and Ned become ends up becoming co-trustee of he the sues estate. Who his dead hiccup trust. dad? Oh, okay. He sues the the estate trust, and and I assume the whatever you sue the will, whoever. I'm sure. suing his grandchildren. I'd like them all dead. <laughs> yes, they're kill. babies. I could just kill the kids, and then I get the fucking money. Yeah. And it's just waiting out that twenty year clock. We're gonna let the kids play with the hope diamond for the afternoon. Um. So. He sues. He gets. He becomes co-trustee of the estate and also editor in chief of the two newspapers. Okay, so really the will meant nothing. Yeah, I mean basically he said my dad was crazy and you can't really argue with that because he's John is hiccuping and yeah. locked in his yeah. house. You know, I want to make some chip fingers for the will. <laughs> the Pinkertons will back me up, and when have they ever not been trustworthy? Yeah. <laughs> So he actually steps in, becomes a little bit responsible at first. Okay. He turned the post into a, from a very decent newspaper into a reactionary sophomore one hated right. by reporters. Right. Ned doesn't care about politics at all, which it's a DC paper, so right. that's not great. He loves ba- he loves baseball, hunting, and horse racing. He owns so many horse races that he bought land in Virginia and built a stable. Okay. Training track. So and I, there I hunt horses with Babe Ruth. <laughs> My perfect day. <laughs> uh, authors Dan and Leslie uh, Lanigan uh, quote, McLean was a difficult man, charming, suspicious, changeable, a falling down drunk, a plausible liar, and a wanton womanizer. But really took, takes a turn for the last few. <laughs> yeah. They're like, he's great. Yeah. Great hair, great attitude, beats his friends, takes money, real jerk off. <laughs> uh, I do love the potpourri yeah. descriptions. Yeah, yeah. So he's seen in D.C. as like a kind-hearted buffoon. He's naive, right. a little bit of a playboy. Right. They love that there. Um, How long until he has a show on CNN Sunday? Soon. <laughs> so they have two more kids and a daughter. They have two more boys and a daughter. Okay. Ned and Evelyn start fighting a lot. Okay. Uh, at one point, she charters a yacht in a rage, and he sends 60 telegrams until she comes oh, back. R- <laughs> yacht chartering in a rage? Just shit you shouldn't have access to. Just I just hate rich people. Yeah, so it's like you much. can't make a getaway in a yacht like me from I need a yacht now. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're really fucking terrible. Like okay. These, this is, sounds a lot like two guys who have never slammed the door on a yacht behind them. That's very yeah, right, That's right, true. Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, they start hanging out with Alice Roosevelt. Oh boy, we'll yeah. An episode right, on right. and her husband at their house. Alice described it as a quote: a general atmosphere of waistcoats unbuttoned, feet on the desk, and spittoons alongside. So it's just a lot of casual hanging out, drinking, and partying. And spitting. Kind of, and spitting. Well, spitting was a thing. Yeah, I know. Forever. Yeah, we've covered parts And of it's this. coming back. It's coming <laughs> yeah, back. Finally. Um, this is where Ned met Senator Warren Harding. Uh-huh. Warren was married to Florence. She always badgered him, and she had an angry voice, and she'd poke until he exploded in rage and yelled, quote, God damn it, shut up! <laughs> and then she'd shut up for a while. <laughs> That was their relationship. It's okay. beautiful. Yeah, his love is crazy. Uh, Warren kept whiskey in his office desk drawer, sure. and he and Ned hit it off. Right, yeah, they have whiskey in the they have, yeah, drawer whiskey. Yes. In 1919, I'm despite- I'm assuming it was in something. It wasn't just sloshing around there on its own. <laughs> no, no, it was in a flask. Like a punch ball? <laughs> you just dip a straw yeah. down into the- Hey, let's put drawer. two cups in here. You are. Wipe the bottom. <laughs> I love whiskey. I love whiskey. I hate my wife. I hate your wife. <laughs> In 1919, despite people always watching him, Vincent got away from his valet and ran into the street, was hit by a, a car, and killed. Wow. What? So he was just hammered without his valet? No, no this is the boy. Oh, no. Vincent. Oh, no. I'm so I sorry I hit your boy. child. I got distracted by that diamond he was wearing. Oh, my God. He's the most guarded kid in the fucking and someone world. someone let him. I mean, a ma- oh, they, my God. Yeah. 
I mean, it's terrible that he died, but I also I do feel for the valet. Oh yeah, who was probably like, you know, I've told this. So story before. am I going to stay on here, or you need to run into the woods and dig a hole uh, okay. and get in that hole, and you'll live there from now on. Go will now I get a, before they're will back. Will I get a weekly check? You will get nothing. Go live in a hole now. That'll be your life. Do you understand? Can I? No. Uh, can I? Get you should be going. A letter of be going. recommendation for, what? for your next what job? Yes. You killed the. You. Killed I didn't Vince. kill him. Yes, you did. He was a runner. Yeah, hey, he's, he's a, a child. Here's a crazy. To watch him. Here's a crazy idea. As the driver of the car, maybe we swap lives. And oh, that's not how it works. No, that's I think just swapping like lives. That. Like apparent, no, we we like parent that. trap him. Yeah, but with the driver and the valet. He's the valet now. I'm the I'm driver. I'm the valet. I'm the driver. There's no child to par- There's no parent trap. There'll be more. I think we can find another child. You bought one before. Replacing the child. What yeah. if we rent a lookalike? Yes. All right. Now we're finally getting somewhere. God damn it! Okay. For a while, this conversation was directionless. Now we're talking about buying a child to make that child. A one that looks similar. It's cl- very close. And Anne will answer to Vincent. I mean, basically, I got you a new child, like a better one, like an upgrade. Where the hell are we going to get a kid? We just buy one like we do. We don't have enough time. One of us might have to dress up like the kid. And we might have to spray paint his tail if it's a different color. Great. Well, I think we're in a good spot. Uh, <laughs> that's what matters. <laughs> so, so the McLeans were at the Kentucky Derby when this happened. Um, many now are like, look, the Hope Diamond's a fucking curse. Yeah, it's I mean, at what curse. point you give in? Evelyn keeps it close by, usually tucked Why? under sofa cushions. <laughs> what? That's where you keep a diamond. Well, the Hope Diamond treated like a quarter that fell through your couch? She wore There's it. There's a few nickels, some quarters, the Hope Diamond, some gum tums uh, some grass. Oh, there's the remote. Uh, there's the remote. <laughs> we found the Apple remote. <laughs> she wore it at parties with the star of East Diamond and another diamond. She, she had wear, three I, diamonds. Not, what, what is she like, looks like she's from another planet. Yeah, she looks crazy. She's like from Krypton. Two of the curses cancel each other out, but then <laughs> the third is kind of a free-floating curse. And I just want everyone to know I'm wearing a cursed diamond, so if you want to live, leave a circle around me. <laughs> she wore it to the races while swimming on an Arctic fishing trip. She even wore it during minor surgery once. I'll just put it here. <laughs> Rest the diamond on my appendix, and then we won't have to take it out. I mean, what in the fuck? Uh, It just uh, is. I mean, it is just. It is obviously just affluence out of control. Yes. Yeah. So it's someone who just cannot recognize reality, and Uh, and has no. I think I would say has no idea of self. Like doesn't know what. She yeah, is. I mean, I, look, obviously, like, a, you know, I don't believe a thing or an item can be cursed. However, if someone told me it was cursed and then everyone around me started dying, yeah. I would be like, I think oh, I'm maybe. done. Yeah, it's not great. I'm not uh, I'm yeah. not going to wear it anymore. Instead yeah. of being like, oh, but I want it for post-op. <laughs> <laughs> or potentially the people who are rich enough to to buy it inevitably are at the top of the tower and it's like where can I go but up right. down right. Right. all yeah. the way yeah. down right. oh it must be a curse yeah right. Marie Antoinette it can't be my sure. choices Marie Antoinette is not I a know, curse right? of a diamond I know, I know if it weren't for that nasty diamond <laughs> <laughs> um she sometimes put it on her Great Dane, and he wore it around. What the fuck? Just... Sometimes I hang it over his tail to cover his butthole. When he gets a hard on, <laughs> I put it on there. Uh, it was said, I don't believe this, but it was some people said Vincent had it in his pocket when he was hit by the car. Sure. Which he could have, but they were at the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. I bet it was in the safe. But still. But if it wasn't, I could see him pulling it out from the sofa. I mean, we would it. know if the kid had the diamond, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would think I think so. they'd be like, oh, my God. No, I put it on the horse that broke its leg during the first round <laughs> at the Derby. <laughs> so I can prove it was elsewhere. You can prove it. So, Horses love carrots. <laughs> so, so after the death, and because he's friends with Harding, Ned throws himself into politics. Good. 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 He's he, got the perspective we need to be engaged and understanding to the common That's man. right. He helps Harding using his newspaper. I'm just like you. When I have someone who doesn't really feel connected to the world, I build a sanitarium at the <laughs> top of my castle. <laughs> We're all suffering in the same way. Just how you want some health care. I know what that's like. I built a hospital at my home. <laughs> 
And we have to tackle the greatest threat facing our nation. Diamond curses. Diamond we all agree. Curses. We all agree. How? What will we do? What will we do to stop diamond curses? And why do people have to pay for their own bowling alley maintenance? Thank you. We need a stimulus that <laughs> says these lanes will get greased on our behalf. What we came up with is that bowling alleys will be tax-free. All right. Woo! Harding and me. Harding and... Come on, everyone. So uh, he helps him with his papers. The McLeans would, uh, were often by his side during campaign stops, and Harding wins. Okay. And Ned is rewarded by being put in charge of the inaugural uh, festivities. Sure. A but huge But his plans are fucking crazy, over-the-top, fancy, huge. Yeah. And What's all- your dragon budget <laughs> for the event? Just so I'm sort of trying to get the nuts and bolts. But... Warren ran on austerity. How much gold do you think everyone will eat per person? All of it. Okay, great. Warren had run on austerity, so right. the other guys in his party are like, dude, you can't fucking do this. This is crazy. So Warren finally goes, okay, no inaugural. They just do it at the White House with a small reception. Sure. Well, just a couple friends and a dragon. <laughs> Something yeah. tiny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing crazy. Uh, and then Harding puts friends in his cabinet. And Ned was made... I want it. Let us out of here, you son of a bitch. You stay <laughs> no, in there. I'm the president. I've nailed it shut. And you're not coming out of there until you agree I'm the best one in the friend group. So Ned was made special agent of the Justice Department. He got a code book, an ID badge, an so ID card instead, and a badge. Instead, he was going to play at a party, and instead he's like, you know, no party. Do you just want to be the head of one of the... the law? Yeah, the <laughs> Can law I be a fancy cop? Yes, absolutely. Yay! Here's I have no experience. That's what we love about I'm you. I'm rich. That's right. You're going to understand what it's like to need to... I'm going to shoot this guy. Oh, uh, well, great. Don't... Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm a cop. I can do that. All right. Let's not just shoot everyone like I that. I shot a Don't dog. Don't shoot him. <laughs> Jesus. I shot a boy. Oh, my God. I'm a cop. <laughs> Bang! Oh, someday you'll fit right in. Nobody prosecutes me. Uh, I'm really loving that he deputized the lizard people, though. They're, that's working out. <laughs> Gangbusters. Uh, so Ned is still a party boy, obviously. Sure. It was rumored he drugged a post reporter and took him on an ocean liner because he wanted company on the trip. What? Uh, hey... What the hell? What, yeah. Where am I? What the hell's uh, going on? We're going what? to Morocco. Ned? Yes. What the hell are you doing I, here? Well, I Wait, wanted... Wait, what did you say? We're going to Morocco. Are we Moro- on a boat? Yeah. What the fuck? Where the fuck is my family? Are oh. my family on the boat? No, no. They're at home. I didn't... They shouldn't be here. Uh, it's for us. It's an The last thing trip. I remember was you said you needed a moment of my time, and then we yes. had a drink. Uh-huh. I, dr- I put uh, drugs inside the drink and knocked you out. What? Why? And then I had my bodyguards carry you here, Why? and now you're on a boat. I need a friend. I'm going to Morocco. I don't, don't want to do it alone. Common. Well, we're going to get to know each other. I. What do you know about lizard people? This is not a good foundation to start a friendship upon. Oh, this is how most of my friendships start. <sighs> Classically, it's usually work friends, uh, you Who's know, like guy? gym friends, and then drugged ocean liner friends. I, I I drugged him too. Yeah, he drugged me and he brought me to the gym. The post. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of guys here from the post. Hello, <laughs> it's us. We were the sports reporters. Who's running the paper? Nate tried to kill us. Hey, we got to get you into bowling league. It's a tax write-off thing mainly, but you'll fit right in. I have a bowling alley on the boat. <laughs> Another gutter ball. <laughs> So, uh, in bars, Ned enjoyed knocking guys' hats off and stomping on them, and then his bodyguards would wait. And How then, great of a game was that? And then reimburse the... Hey! Uh, <laughs> now you can go buy another one. This game is awesome. Everybody wins. <laughs> I'm in charge of legal affairs. <laughs> so, Ned and the president became drinking buddies, obviously. They uh, would lead the Secret Service on car chases. Right. They watch shows at Gaiety Burlesque from a concealed box. Ned wants from a pe- concealed box. Roll us in. <laughs> Put us in the coffin. <laughs> Ned wants peed in a fireplace at the White House. What? He owned a. Hey, ha- this place fucking sucks. <laughs> I feel like the only other president who did that was Trump. <laughs> but he did it daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long until you guys are getting the urinal? 
He owned a house on 8th Street that connected to the McLean mansion next door, and he rented it to Attorney General Harry, Harry Doherty. So it's a party house okay. with a regular delivery of confiscated liquor because it's prohibition. Oh, wow, right. And businessmen came to buy political favors. Do- Doherty estimated they had up to 500 visitors a day. Oh, my God. We're going to need help getting this liquor off the street. <laughs> we just... can't just pour it in the, into the sewers. We, you, no, we need men to drink. Process it. The level of drinking during Prohibition was insane. arguably the same amount of drinking or maybe oh, more. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's Because it became, anything. yeah, right. <laughs> Ed, like, part of me thought, like, maybe some people were like, damn it. But everybody was just like, we'll just keep drinking. We'll just keep going. Right. And Ned nicknamed this house the Love Nest. Ugh. So that means there's fucking going on. Ugh. There were two poker games a week at the White House or at one of Ned's houses. Florence made drinks and cooked for the gamblers. Since Warren and Nev- Ned loved golf so much, Ned built a nine-hole golf course at Friendship. Oh, and my God. The sod was imported from Switzerland. Oh, my God. Neither was very good at golf, so Ned hired a full-time tutor for $10,000 a year. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, it's just too much. The staff is too much. Fucking rich people. Yeah, I mean, but this is on a level where, I mean, this is just unreal. It's no different than Bezos going to the fucking moon. No, but I mean, as far as, like, there's general general being rich, which is, again, I mean, it should be more... uh, Stabilize the balance, but then there is this level where yeah. it's just like you know, the, like you. The, I mean, I'm not saying we need to blow people up, but you know what I mean, like <laughs> eh, it's a little out of control. It's like we need to make some uh, lesson or example at some point sure. to say this isn't okay. I'm yeah. waiting for Ned to pitch that they call themselves the Regulators. I'll be Ned Dog. You're Warren G. Yeah. It's a thing. It's a whole <laughs> club. We'll <laughs> have. <laughs> The anti saloon League noticed Ned was a big part of the president's life and wrote a public warning that was published in Auto Piano Weekly. Yeah, which <laughs> obviously is where you put a lot of important stories like that. Hey, uh, we need a political column for the... Uh, we're pretty booked in the magazine this month. Uh, Article-wise, we are loaded. There's a lot, a lot of fun stuff going on in here. What uh, um, what other articles do you have in Auto Piano Weekly? We have Tempo. Oh no, that's uh, trying to fix the the clicks on your metronomes. Absolutely, oh. that's uh, a lot of it. Obviously, uh-huh. we've got a lot of pictures of uh, pianos. Uh-huh. Uh, we do a whole thing on wires. Uh, yeah, piano wires. Yeah, you know, but there's piano wires and pianos. Yeah, no, I know. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of that. Um, we actually, in this edition, are breaking down every key, what we'd name it, and what uh-huh. its purpose is. Okay. Uh, that takes a while, because I don't know, do you know how many keys are on a piano? Four, 40. Over a thousand. A thousand. And um, so we're doing that. Um, then, obviously, we have uh, Mr. Autotune. Mm-hmm. Uh, every month we have a, a guy who's really good at that, and we have him in a suit or something. It's uh-huh. a big picture. It's a layout. Uh-huh. Now, these guys are excited to get that. Uh, we do a lot of stuff talking about the pedals. Pe- which pedal's better, you know, out of the three? We what's, take polls. Uh, what's your circulation? We have, well, I, I, you, how many are we making or how many people are subscribing to the publication? How many people are subscribing? Outside of the people who work for it. Yeah. And their families. Yeah. And their friends. Yeah. And the families. Yeah. Yeah, there's not anyone because this is a paper for a family. Oh, oh. Yeah, this is a family paper for uh, pia- piano people. Uh huh. Yeah. Automatic piano people. Automatic piano people, uh, right. which is very different than the standard piano. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we can do something in the next five months. <laughs> it's really tight right now. It really is. It's nuts. It's nuts. Now, it's this nuts. article uh, called Tommy, Go to Your Room, what is that? That's a letter I wrote to my son. He was being a real uh-huh. asshole, if uh-huh. I'm being totally honest. Sure. I found out he was putting his vegetables out the window at uh-huh. dinner not eating them. Yeah. So this is my way of telling him through the publication that he sure. needs to go upstairs and okay. sleep it off. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is piano related. It seems like a family newsletter. It is a paper for piano auto people family members. Yeah. Are, yep. you, are you the only auto piano people family? I'm really the only one who's doing any of it. The rest of the family doesn't love it. Does anyone else in the family read it? Anyone read it? I don't. They don't really get it. They yeah. have it. They're given it. Yeah. They're given it. Yeah. They're given it. Yeah. And they're told to read it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big thing. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. It sounds yeah. like it. It's really. great. No, it sounds really Thank you. big. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, I need this letter published to the president. Oh, here we are. Back to square one. It's going to be a while. <laughs> 
So uh, this article in Auto Piano Weekly mentioned Ned by name and said he was supposed to have the, quote, most extensively stocked seller in Washington. Wow. So, so Ned's not exactly subtle. Yeah, uh, I mean, you're, yeah, it's, it's... About his drinking. It's egregious. Yes. Right. He has a pet seal that he gives whiskey to every day. Well, uh, I don't want to... Uh, by the way, there's a lot of people who have made the accusations that I have a pet seal. And, uh, you do. And I do I've not. I've seen it. I do not. Yeah. And he certainly doesn't drink whiskey. Yes, now... He He's a scotch man. <laughs> let's dig into what you just said. Uh, Ned had a pet seal uh-huh. that he drank whiskey with. Yes. Right. Okay. Um... Now, as far as laws go, uh-huh. there are none? Mm-mm. Okay, great. Just want to make sure. Nope. None. Yeah. Whiskey's just like ocean water. Uh, they had a small house in Palm Beach, and when he was there great once- Great climate for a seal. He gave whiskey to a trained bear and then took it to a dance hall and tried to get women to dance with it, and they wouldn't, so he finally gave them money so they would dance with the drunk bear. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um... You had to be stopped earlier, and you weren't. But uh, so, uh-huh. it's really on a level that's not okay, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can't it's super not. You okay. just like these are all things independently you couldn't do, and yeah. this is over the course of one night that he got a bear drunk. Yeah. And when people are like, holy shit, there's a bear here. He's like, relax, I'll pay you to dance with it. <laughs> he made like a bear strip club, kind of. Yeah, well, the girls- You want a private the, dance? The girls No touching the bear. They didn't want to dance with it because they were like, it's, I, a, it's bear. a fucking drunk bear. No, 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 and then no, he's like, drunk. here's $1,000. Okay. I'll drunk. dance with the bear. No. Don't worry, it's drunk. He's not going to make proper decisions right now. <laughs> the bear's hammered. He's not going to know what he's doing. This was reported widely, like all over the country. Even the piano magazine. Yeah. And then there's, of course, plenty of rumors about sex workers and ladies coming to the love nest. With right. the drunk bear? No, the drunk <laughs> okay. bear's gone. We're gone. How much for you to fuck the bear? <laughs> Do a little more than dance. Yeah. <laughs> so the bear enjoys the dance, and he's wondering if maybe anybody wants to go up there and run around. Okay. <laughs> You're asleep. Let's no. go to see the bear. Let's go. Hey. What's to this? What's to this? Uh-huh. You, me, uh-huh. could be friends, the mm-hmm. bear. Mm-hmm. We go upstairs. We all get our clothes off, and well, the bear keeps his fur on. He's not going to touch you. He's just going to watch you and the bear, to be clear. Yeah. It's, it's nothing weird. It's nothing weird. You. I'll go into my little box that I go and watch movies in. It's a coffin with eye holes cut out. It's not crazy. Won't even, yeah. And it'll be stood up properly, not in the way that you would do at a funeral. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Christ, so I get whiskey! Get whiskey and another couple ladies who might sleep with this bear. So the bear <laughs> killed two women. We're looking for another two. So, Ned and Evelyn are fighting. and the Over pa- what? <laughs> and the papers are writing about it. <laughs> then on August 2nd, 1923, the president suddenly died of a cerebral hemorrhage. Wow. Did the, he touch the diamond? <laughs> yes, right. The McLeans are very Put upset. Put it on the back of my neck for a minute. <laughs> the McLeans are very upset. They leave DC. They tell Florence to stay in the Friendship House. You stay at Friendship. Well, she does, but she's trying to save her husband's reputation, and she's burning hundreds of documents in the fireplace. The seal's handing them to her. <laughs> Thank you. More. Hurry. We've got to get rid of the evidence. There's a bear. <laughs> so. It doesn't matter. Look, the stories of his affairs hit the press. Like, he's sure. just a womanizer. Everyone finds out about right. it. The, uh, now, the government had set aside oil reserves for the Navy's use. Right. And the Secretary of the Interior, Albert Fall, took a bribe and leased the lands without bids. Okay. This is the Teapot Dome scandal. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Fall asked Ned, when people start sniffing around... He, to say you loan me a hundred thousand dollars, okay. So he can say that's where the money came from to cover the bribe, right? For sure, take that. And Ned's like, yeah, I'll do that. That's a good idea. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That's have great. you met my bear, the wow. seal? And I have a seal and the bear. Oh. I think those lizard guys are real, but I don't oh. know. Crazy shit happened last night. <laughs> Fuck a bear killed the seal, man. Nobody <laughs> could see it coming. <laughs> They're supposed to be best friends because of their relationships with beach balls. It's dumb of me to give him one bottle of whiskey and then they fall over. I tell you, I didn't believe in the hope time and cursed until a bear killed my seal. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> so, uh, 
So anyway, he says he'll cover and say he gave the guy $100,000. Who would take that deal? I know, but they're all friends. And Anyway, the Senate investigates. Oh, good. A ton of wires they find out are being sent back and forth between the Washington Post, Ned's office, uh-huh. or his assistant, and Ned in Palm Beach. And they're all coded. Uh-huh. Uh, the messages were from his I assistant. also like milky cereal. <laughs> Maybe we make sure it's extra milky and there's not a lot of cereal in the bowl. I mean, they're just jumbled words. The air bay upped fe another way, <laughs> ostitute prey, <laughs> end wait. same or may. These are bad. They, they, this is not a good code. <laughs> the messages are all about the illegal deals. Evelyn told, tells Ned, don't go to the Senate. Don't. I'll go to the Senate. Baby. Don't go. I'll don't go, go to the Senate. Baby. I'll take the bear and we'll go. I'll take the bear and we'll wear the diamond. The bear's going <laughs> to drive in the diamond car. Yeah, dri- how sober are you? <laughs> You could drive. Seems right. better than He's I am. Drive. <laughs> one senator. The bear th- makes a seal noise now. FYI. Now one senator thinks Ned is lying about the loan because he heard Ned is broke. Okay. And first Ned ducks the. I mean, he's broke. Yeah. He's this broke. is Brewster's millions. It really is. <laughs> so Ned Ned ducks the uh, you know the the what do you call it uh, subpoena subpoena. Uh, he says he has a sinus infection. <laughs> I can't do a subpoena. My nose hurts. <laughs> so, you know how it goes. Good to see you. Uh, he has his lawyers and his connections in DC. Your Honor, my client has a stuffy nose. <laughs> what else he going to do? What are you, barbaric? You want the man to come here? He's not an animal. The man next to him is. That's his bear. That's a bear. <laughs> He's doing the seal thing lately because he ate. Your Honor, it, <laughs> can we stop typing for a minute, darling? Uh, Your Honor, a um, the bear ate his seal. Off the record. Off the record, and that's why his nose hurts. <laughs> there he is. So, okay. Well, there it is. Is he hiccuping? He is hiccuping. <laughs> yeah, he saw my dad do it. <laughs> my dad uh, died from hiccuping. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to take a look at his will. I know that. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Am I the lawyer now? Um, so he has his lawyers and connections in D.C. try to cover things up, but the activity just makes the senators more suspicious. They really were. They weren't buying the stuffy nose stuff? Yes. But the, the investigation is going absolutely nowhere. Okay. And one senator gets really focused on dead. On net, okay. And... Ned can't handle this. He can't handle the stress. He puts on weight. His face looks haunted. He's morose. He's withdrawn. Okay. And then Ned goes to fall, and he said, "I've done as much as I can, but I'm going to tell the truth now." Oh God, bad time. And there's a senator coming down to interview Ned because he won't go to Washington. So Ned tells him the truth, and the senator's just totally shocked. Like it's the Teapot Dome scandal. He just Is drops it. it you in didn't his know lap. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like you knew. They had absolutely nothing, and we're about to end the hearings. And oh he my just God. fucking squealed. Oh, he no. just squealed. You gotta be a good man. Dumps the whole thing in their laps. He confessed he hadn't lent and fall the money. It breaks open the whole scandal, and it's the biggest scandal in American history, uh-huh. and uh, up until like Watergate. Right. So Ned Ned then goes to testify in front of the Senate, and he just looks fucking dumb. Hi. He said things like, quote, I've read so many of these telegrams. My head is dizzy, Senator. I'm trying to figure them out. Like, they're oh, sentences. He's, oh, God. Yeah, he just looks like a fucking idiot. Right. In the telegrams, Ned was called T-K-V-O-U-E-P or the Chieftain or the Big Bear. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> or seal owner. <laughs> yeah. So Ned becomes a laughing stop stock in the country as his messages are published in newspapers. Right. So his texts are out there. Everyone just thinks he's yeah. His right. texts are out there. Everyone just thinks he's a fucking idiot. Right. Both Evelyn and Ned are now heavily drinking and they've got serious money problems. Okay. Jesus. So when Ned needs money, he would just go to the Washington Post and take it cash. That's how it works. In one year, he took ninety thousand dollars. That's how it works, though. Is you, that you, how your works? business is a bank? I yes, just catch. Right. I just catch the paper boys on their way back in from outside. <laughs> give me those. <laughs> He's got the bear. Hey, what do you got, them. Timmy? What do you got? Uh, 50? Nine dollars and eight cents. Give it to me. Give me a fucking That's money. That's all I have. Okay. And I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Ah, my wife probably won't be able to wait until she sees us nine dollars and eight cents. Woo, we're back. I Who mean, wants to buy the Hope Diamond? I mean, in today's money, that's about $3 million that he's 
just taking in cash sure. from the post. <laughs> He's also blatantly having an affair. Great. So they sue each I'm other. I'm fucking the bear. <laughs> so they sue each other's divorce in 1925. Ned's drinking like crazy. He goes to Mexico and sends her divorce papers. Then he sends more from Latvia inside a Christmas package decorated with reindeer and holly. <laughs> I want to send her divorce papers for Christmas, too. <laughs> it's got to be nice. <laughs> Can you put some holly on there also? Uh, these are divorce papers? Yeah. Okay. And, and then the, oh, the little reindeer. I ho, ho, hope you rot in hell. <laughs> <laughs> you so, know, Dasher and Dancer and my attorney, <laughs> Leonard Feinstein. Hello. I don't know why he set it up like that, but we are here to serve you. <laughs> so Evelyn uses her lawyers to block it. They somehow remain married. Okay. <laughs> I don't, this part I don't understand. Like, I kept reading this over again. And I'm like, what in the fuck is happening? Okay. In 1929, Evelyn takes the kids and leaves, moving into a little house on 8th Street. A close friend of Ned says he's just totally upset, said sure. he was, quote, like a ship without a rudder. He didn't give a damn where he went or what he did. Sure. But they're still married. They're officially still married. Sure. And they have other kids than Vincent? That they just have three were... more, yeah. Oh, okay. And just know, they're like, those are not worth a goddamn thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> terrible rumors are circulating about Ned now because he's the last. Terrible stock. rumors is the house he's staying in, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The peeing in the White House fireplace is one of I the rumors. I was too tired. Who else is going to put it out? <laughs> I thought the fire was spreading. <laughs> You're welcome. I saved the White House. I mean, imagine <laughs> pissing in a White House fireplace. I was fireplace. scared the fire scared my bear. <laughs> <laughs> People said he had, quote, urination syndrome and had also peed on the leg of the Belgian ambassador. <laughs> Hello, this is how we say hi here. I think they like it. Hello there, sir. He went to L.A. for a few months where he had an affair. I'm on the Hollywood land sign. <laughs> where he had an affair with Rose Doras. She was the sister of a famous actress who was the mistress of Ned's friend, William Randolph Hearst. Oh, that's cute. Ned brought Rose to D.C. and introduced her to staffers at the Post in what was an incredibly awkward meeting. That is a bold move. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so we need 90 grand. <laughs> Hello! How's everyone's article? <laughs> now, needing money, he tries to sell the post, but Evelyn blocks it because she wants her boys to inherit it. Okay. She also tried to get Ned removed as co-trustee of his father's estate. She said he was broke, and he had borrowed $100,000 against a property to go on a trip to Rose with Rose to Europe, where he then ran out of money in Paris and borrowed more money from the hotel. I I to see. buy another di cursed diamond. <laughs> <laughs> always running out of money in France. <laughs> yes. Uh, it yes. always seems here. I don't know how it happens. I know how this works. Don't worry. I've been here before. It's very now, easy. Why did I buy a third bear? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many bears now. Oh my god, I bought a fifth bear. <laughs> Just keeps waking up. Uh, I got so drunk, I bought another bear last uh, night. Sir, you said to get the bear ridden. Yes, no, I said we're going to Paris. Oh I my just, god. Jesus. Honey, why are there six bears in the other hotel room? Well, to be fair, I only bought four of them. <laughs> and then I apparently late last night, I ordered two more. Oh. My eyes were bigger <laughs> than my tummy. <laughs> So um, he ends up being hospitalized in Paris for like alcoholic eight bears reasons. Near him. This room's only for bears. This is a bear room. Uh, Evelyn finally sues Ned for divorce, claiming desertion and non support, which was granted in 1932. Okay. Now, same year, 1932. Boy, March Rose 1st. really caught him at his apex, didn't she? She really did. Really, God, he knows when to set, land it. <laughs> Uh, on March 1st, 1932, the Lindbergh baby was kidnapped, right. and because of the threats made to kidnap Vincent, Evelyn is like emotionally attached to it, very upset. So she reaches out, reaches out to con man and ex FBI agent Gaston Means from episode 293, and he said he could find out where the baby was, but he needed a hundred thousand dollars for ransom and four thousand for personal expenses. Oh, this guy. So she hawks the diamond to pay for him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Means, uh, Means strings her along for six weeks. He said he was negotiating with the kidnapper, who he said was named the Fox. I got him. He's the Fox, and I'm talking to him right now. Do you need me to send in the bear? <laughs> Not now, Ned. Not now, buddy. <laughs> then Means asked for another 35000 and Evelyn realizes close. she's being conned, and yeah. she 
calls out to she reaches out to J. Edgar Hoover, who then Means goes down. Okay, the Lindsberg baby's already dead. Right. So Means is convicted of fraud. As far as hawking the diamond, she, like the story said, she did it many times and then would get it back. So okay. she's always hawking the diamond, right. and getting it back. Yeah. At this point, when she's broke. So Ned has to give up control of the post because he was borrowing so much money. They're finally like, okay, dude, you're killing the fucking... I mean, the paper's, paper's almost gone. It's fucked at this we point. We can't afford ink. Um, four days after he has to give up control, the paper is auctioned off. Wow. Because that's how much money he sucked out of it. Wow. On June 1st, 1933. Evelyn bid for it, but up until 625000 and then she couldn't bid anymore. The new owner, who bought, uh, he called it. He called the paper quote mentally, morally, physically, and in every other way bankrupt. <laughs> he Ned was just wobbling next to him, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, last guy, I don't know, uh, he didn't know what he was doing too much. I, I said, the one who saved it, and I said, this is a lot. Was we needed a section about bears, just bear news. What's going this on? This guy, with bears? this guy thinks he knows how to run a paper. Wait, the bears are dancing with ladies in Florida. We're not covering. Who knows this man? <laughs> I have five pairs, and they're very interesting, and they should have a paper. Someone shoot this man. Bear Weekly. <laughs> tired. You're tired? I'm going to sleep. What? Now here it's on it's your a, feet. But you just, this man's asleep on my feet. I bid 800000 My God, he's pissing. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. I'm wet like a seal. Where's my seal? Do you even know him? Oh, God. Christ, he's <laughs> That's what he sounded like. Okay. So. I miss everybody. All right, there's going to be... The Lindbergh, baby! Oh, my God. His <laughs> breath is unreal. So, just two... This guy who bought it for 800000 Yeah. Just two years earlier had offered Ned $5 million. Oh, my God. That's what Evelyn blocked. Oh, my God. <sighs> so this guy was like, boy... Your drinking really helped me out. A couple days after the auction, a reporter tracked down Ned. He was now in a hospital in Montreal that treated alcoholics, quote, undergoing treatment. Okay. Evelyn had Ned declared insane and committed him to a sanitarium. Okay. In the attic. In the attic. Right. <laughs> right. He loves attics. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> the last eight years of his life were spent in an insane asylum where he denied he was Ned McLean. That's not who I am. I'm Batman, you idiot. Anybody who said he was Ned, he got violent with. Wow. I'm not fucking Ned! Did he have a name that he came up Bert! with? Bert! No, he no, didn't he have just, a... No, no. That'd be great. He died of a heart attack in 1941 at 55 years oh old. Oh, my God. He lived hard. And uh, he cut Evelyn out of his will. He out left... of whose will? He didn't have a will. Uh, yeah, he wasn't right. Ned. He uh, left $300,000 to a mistress. Evelyn would not write. Rose? Not I don't know if it was Rose okay. or not. I just said a mistress. Um, I doubt it. Okay. Evelyn wrote a book and called Ned, quote, a queer, queer fellow was this Ned McLean that I had married. She described him as unearned wealth in undisciplined hands. Hmm. She remained for the rest of At her the life. At funeral, there's like eight bears in the back. <laughs> the bears have really taken his eye. And now an interpretive dance to see Ned off. <laughs> <laughs> I finally understand what he saw in this. <laughs> the priest has been eaten by one of the cubs. That's fine. Okay. Reporters? Um, Cub reporters? Or the... Yes, okay, that's right. Yes. He was a reporter. Yes, yes. Um, she remained, she was still the matriarch of Washington society for her whole life. Okay. She would wear the Hope Diamond all the time. Wow, this person. Um, their daughter... Name one bad thing it did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Their daughter wore the Hope Diamond at her wedding to Senator Robert Reynolds. Wow. It was his fifth marriage. Sure. He was 57. She was 19. Great. That sounds like the diamond's already working its magic. He was a Nazi apologist, huh. co-owner of a fascist anti-Semitic paper. Great. Great. Six years later, uh, Evelyn's daughter committed suicide by ah. drinking laudanum. By what? Laudanum. Ah. Evelyn never got over it. Her money issues took a toll. She died a few months later on April 26, 1947, of pneumonia. I don't believe in the curse. She was said to be wearing the Hope Diamond at uh, the time. Oh, my God. It was sold to jeweler Harry Winston to pay Evelyn's estate taxes. 
He donated the gem to the Smithsonian Institute. Some say the tragedy in your life was due to the Hope Diamond. Others say no, it's alcoholism and being rich and everything else. Well, it's clearly the diamond. The Hope Diamond is now valued at $200 million. Don't touch it. Is that, it's still and the it's Smithsonian, safe, Smithsonian, uh, Smithsonian? Yeah, Smithsonian has it. Well, that Winston guy owns it, but he it's in the Smithsonian. Right. It's safely residing in the nation's capital of where nothing is being cursed. Yep. <laughs> right. Everything's been good. That's Everything's it. Been good That's at, it. <laughs> man, if we realized the key to solving oh. all this was just getting the Hope Diamond into the ocean. Can we just move it? <laughs> um, wow. Wow. Sources, uh, Dan and Leslie, Landrigan, uh, Bar Harbor, Babylon, Bill Hogan, the article Losing It, uh, PBS.org, and the Washington Post. Oh, wow. Good Lord. I mean, she's... That thing. I get it. Yeah. It's... I pictured it bigger. Yeah, I mean that's pretty big for a diamond, though. You know. Yeah, it seems I think bigger. It's the, I think it's I the, have bigger. I think I think it's the color that everyone. Loves. I have bigger and more colorful. On me, in the car, I literally have a bigger, better, bolder uh, diamond. The car we just hit the uh, child yeah. of a wealthy couple. With. Yeah, that car that I hit a bus with and then just took off. <laughs> um, what do you believe, Dave? Curse uh, or alcoholism? That's a new game show I have, uh, by the way. I think that bad things happen to rich people. Yeah. I mean, generally, I, you know, it doesn't Careless, all of them. Care, but, the level of carelessness. Well, the, yeah, there's a, you know, these people destroy their own life, the drinking and everything else. And yeah. the, once you bring bears into the house, it's kind of like. But look, I mean, you know, a kid running out in the street, how much was that kid? We know how they raised, you know, they were raised and stuff. How much, how many boundaries did that kid have, have in the first place? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's all sort of relative. Well, you outsourced your love. <laughs> yes. You're like, protect him. Yeah. Please. We don't want to touch him. It's worth mentioning that was the only child hit by a car in the 1800s. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, car kids were fucking constantly. Like, <laughs> I mean, honestly. Yeah. Um, that is crazy. Yeah. I mean, I I think in many ways, like it, like it's amazing how rich some people are right now, but same it's, level. What's that? Same level as these. Yeah, guys. yeah. And and how comfortable we are with it and how, like, I, there's so much. I, I People still, there are a lot of people who still are like, it's just awesome that they make that much money. I know. You know? <laughs> and it's just like. Well, we have, a, we have um, decided that people have their favorite billionaires, right? They like yeah. Bill Gates. They like Bezos Elon Musk. And Musk. And, but to get to be a billionaire, you have to uh, brutalize human beings. Yeah, you shouldn't. If you have the impulse to have that much money, it's a red flag. Like they're in in the new bill. Supposedly, there's an there's a credit for uh, EV buying, like eight thousand right. dollars. Right. But it's twelve thousand five hundred if you buy it from a union company, and Elon Musk is flipping out. Right. Right. So yeah. Right. Well, fuck off. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you, you don't you're take the richest care, man in the world. You can you can fucking unionize your fucking yeah. workers. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself, yeah. you little baby. Yeah. Like it's and he's also he's just a government sponge. Like he's made all of his money off of government technology and everything else. But also, it's like he, he, wanting to be that is a is a, a psychological disorder. Mm -hmm. Well, you I know. think he's just trying to make up for the fact that he doesn't have enough money to buy the Hope Diamond off the Smithsonian. Oh, he, <laughs> and I think people should he, get in his ear about that and taunt it. him. I want, yeah. I'm interested in purchasing the Hope Diamond. Uh, yeah, Please. I mean. Sure. Sure, your dad owned that emerald mine, but did you ever own the Hope Diamond? And the oh, answer is not man. yet. And let's get it in his hands. Well, and it's also it's nice to look back and be like, man, I can't, it's nice that we don't have a fucking psychotic rich person running the Washington Post anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and look, people don't remember, but Bill Gates was in the '90s a terrible fucking human being. He was our villain. He I was mean, one of the main villains, and now he's gone. He, I mean, he's like donating money to MSNBC and, do, and the oh, Guardian. So and they don't even right hang yes, out with Jeffrey don't. anymore. Allegedly, yeah. yes. allegedly. Oh, yeah. I mean, he went. He went to an island with Jeffrey, and then his wife stopped fucking talking to him, and eventually divorced him. Because, well, and then when he got interviewed about it, yeah. it's amazing. And she's like, "Is there a lesson to be learned?" He was like, "Well, he's dead." Yeah. And there's a long pause while Judy Woodruff's like. Just okay, sip of water well, while I process what you just said. Yeah, I mean, we'll do a Bill Gates episode at some point, but he's he's an 
awful, awful human yeah, being. Yeah, the, the love that we have for billionaires, yes. again, I think. Yeah, no, just, so everyone's got a favorite billionaire, yeah. so then they don't want to harm billionaires. Well, they, is, they, I think, again, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, in a lot of ways, the American dream is predicated on the fact that you do it on the backs of others. Yeah. And so if the idea is that in this country, anyone can achieve any level of success, I understand why people are attracted to that, but when you see it actually put into, and when people are actually doing it, it, it's disgusting. I mean, it's crazy. The, I mean, when you look at over the pandemic year, how rich these people got. And yeah. I mean, uh, you they know, should, they, the at redistribution. The very least, of, at the very least, they should lose every dollar they made during the pandemic. Yeah. One out of five families lost their and entire savings. And people, I think, also see when people, like Bill Gates has done, you know, some philanthropic work. I mean, as, as most billionaires do. But you need to look at how, they, I mean, it is, we are talking about like, they are just tipping well. I mean, it, they have yeah. so much fucking money. He always says I'm giving away my money, but every year he has more money. Yes, so and, and, and also money. the shit with the vaccine when he yes. when it was he he got them to stop. Uh, you know, giving they were away gonna, like yeah, they were gonna give away drop the give patents. away the recipe to make these he fucking killed, things. He killed tons. So of now people. in Africa, you know what they're doing? They're like backwards, like trying to figure out how to of fucking course. make this shit. Of course, it's just like what? what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what I is enough? Know. The only thing that gets me out of bed every morning is the motivation that one day it might be my boot on the necks of my friends and family. Oh, what a great dream. <laughs> and that's what keeps me going. One day, baby. Have a bear. Uh, thank you for joining us, Luke. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks to your dog. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, good, uh, good timing with the dog. And thank you, the Lord. Above, you're a man, you have a beard, you wear mandals, you're in the clouds, you've decided all of it. We are all part of your plan, and it's going really, really well. We're excited to see it through. And we're all going to be seeing you real, real soon, champ. Thanks, everybody. Go to dollarpodcast.com for some tickets. Bye.